Hello guys, what is up? It is me, Prince of Venice, back here with another video. What if Deku had wiped your powers? Part 5, named Eerie. And you, of course, know what this is about. We're going to save our little girl from the clutches of that annoying crow-wearing motherfucker, uh, Chisaki. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all of my videos. And uh, let's begin. The recap is down below. We begin this part with Chisaki arriving at one of the Villain League's hideouts. This is seriously your base. Looks pretty run down, he says to twice. Who would then say this is just an interview site? You think we'd actually let you go to our real place? I don't know. Now follow me. As he follows twice, he says this place is a bit dusty. I might get sick. Don't worry, the folks in here are especially sick, Shigaraki would say as Shisaki then comes face to face with the villains, but he is disappointed. I don't like that look in his eye. He's supposed to be some high level gangster or something, right? said Magne. And Shigaraki says, the young leader of the Psyche. Yep, he's a gangster. Magne, because he's just kind of angry, doesn't really get into the flirtatious mood like usual, asking if this guy's going to cooperate or not. What do you want with us? She's like, would then say, the fall of All for One was significant as that of All Might. Now, it's time to decide who will rule the night, because it's pretty clear who will rule the day. Chisaki will scowl, being reminded of Deku as he says that he will become the new boss, but Chisaki asks if he has a plan at all. Plan? I thought you were joining us. You can take care of that. I did not come here to join your group. You have lost valuable individuals because you do not know how to use them. Muscular. Moonfish. Your first known will all destroyed by a child. I'd like to see you try and beat him then. I will if you come under my wing. Magne at this point rages as he unravels his staff and the Yakuza is pulled to him as he would then go to land a punch. However, as he's pulled over, Chisaki takes off one glove and simply scratches the villain's arm, causing his entire torso to explode to pieces. This shocks the villains as his blood would then splatter all over and twice would yell, M Magne! Shisaki, as he becomes splattered with blood, starts to get covered with hives, and Compressed jumps in close and touches him, only to find that his quirk is not working. He didn't notice a quirk-canceling drug be shot into his shoulder, and at that moment, Shisaki would explode his arm off, causing Shigaraki to then run over, with them intending to rip the, uh, the enemy apart, and Shisaki would yell, SHIELD, NOW! An underling of his then appears out of thin air and takes Shigaraki's attack as he decays to pieces, and in that instant, the men of the Yakuza burst in with one of his gigantic quirk users bursting into the hangar. Remember... You started this, Chisaki would say. Back at the UA dorm, while everyone gets ready to leave and are getting dressed, in a rush manner, Deku would walk out fully ready and on his phone, and he's seeing a certain news about a boy from UA who awakened a second quirk. Hey guys, did you hear about this? Wait, what? Whoa! Krishma would say, as he would then trip and fall while trying to put his pants on, he would say, So what was it? Deku then walks over as everyone gathers, and Kirishima gets up putting on his pants properly, and he, much like everyone, is surprised to learn that there was someone at UA who had awakened a second quirk. This is just becoming more and more common, isn't it? Two quirks. Midoriya, your powers are nothing like your parents, right? Todoroki would ask, and Deku says, Nope, but I'd love to meet that guy. Don't fight in our school building, you dumbass, Baku would say, and Deku says he won't do that at all. And he grabs his backpack and runs up with a mischievous smile on his face, and everyone realizes what's on his mind, because it's pretty fucking clear. Wherever that guy is, I feel sorry for him, you know what I would think. After leaving their dorms, all the students gather and hear a speech from some teachers about their future as heroes and about their next step. And this is, of course, the next uh, step in the internships as well. And they don't really get into detail about it, but that's what the teachers are for. The students then go back to their normal schedule, and as Class 1A sits in their class, Aizawa once again begins to inform them. Alright, we'll be resuming our normal classroom activities. I know you've been put through a lot, but you've held out this long, so it's time to push on. And that is why the training level will be increased tenfold. Asmi then raises her hand. Sensei, what about the new internships the, that Principal Nezu talked about? I was going to talk about that later, but these new internships will be making use of the connections you made in the sports festival and the last internships. You'll be invited back by certain heroes depending on how much promise you showed. Hell yeah! We get to work again, Sensei. Quiet. Sorry. I thought I would then say, but yes, we do. Now that you have your licenses, you'll be able to go into the actual field as psychic of sorts instead of just watching and learning. This is mostly due to the rise of villains though, so be vigilant. And because I know just hearing it won't help, I brought them. He would then point to the door as it is slid open and in walks the big three and a big smile instantly creeps up on Deku's face and Mirio who enters feels his presence as he would then turn instantly to face him, only for Bakugo to then scream in his ear to stop. Stop using Conqueror! Sorry, sorry, but remember, that's him, that's the guy who got two quirks. Hearing this, they all recognize his face and are more interested with Mirio then posing and saying it's a pleasure to meet them. The name is Miro Togata. Nejiro then says, Nejiro Hado, and everyone looks to Amajiki as he would then stare them all down with incredible fierceness, and this causes them all to freeze, and Bakugo would think, this bastard's strong for sure. 
Meanwhile, Deku is unaffected, but now he does want to fight Amajiki as well, only for the senior to then turn timid and plant his face into the board behind. I, I can't do it, guys. No matter how much I imagine, how I imagine them as potatoes, my words just won't come out. They still look human. This confuses the students who are in a daze, wondering if he's really one of the big three, and Ezra will laugh, introducing him. Sorry, he's a bit shy. Oh, by the way, why do you wear a mask? Is it for comfort or is it a fashion choice? As she asks this to Ojiro, he goes to answer, uh, but then she talks over him, asking Todoroki how he got a scar, and he goes to answer, but she talks over him as well and keeps asking a bunch of questions like a child, but Deku then sighing. <sighs> a natural airhead. So cute. I know, right, Kamenaro would say? And as she keeps talking and asking things, as well, would then death stare Mirio, who would not as he reels uh, in Nejire and apologizes. Alright then, the journey ahead will be full of difficulties, Deku would yell as he poses, confusing everyone, and Mirio says, yes, finally someone gets it. As everyone sees them posing and are weirded out, Deku would say, what? It's what you're supposed to say. How do you know what exactly, though, Jiro would say, and Deku would say, it's a slogan. Anyway, you and me, let's fight right now. Everyone would then sigh, with Mirio then laughing, but he says that the only way they will probably understand what he's about to talk about is through a fight. So how about it? All of you against me. Let's have a go. This absolutely surprises everyone and makes Deku happy, but Aizawa does allow it and they all go to the gymnasium where everyone wonders if he's really gonna face them all, and he was actually in his hero costume minus the goggles and cape, so he seems serious, but still. Mirio would then say, don't worry, I'll be saving my second quirk for the ones that really push me. So you think we can't push you, huh? Bakugo would say. Mirror with a smile that says no, causing him to pop a vein, but Miro does say that Deku can't use Conqueror Spirit. If I get hit by that, I honestly might die. Die, Deku would say. My quirk can be really dangerous sometimes, uh, I'll talk about it later. So, who's first? Before Kishima can say anything, Bakugo then blasts forward at the speed of sound, and his palms near Miro's face, and with an explosion, he hits him point blank. However, Miro then appears out from the ground behind Bakugo, and Bakugo would twist and spin with an explosion, going to kick him. However, his foot would then go through Miro, shocking him and everyone. As well, he permeates through Bakugo. Miro then closes the distance and lands a punch. Well, he's about to, but Bakugo puts his hand out, but Miro then permeates through it while still letting his fist slam into his jaw, shaking him up. He's phasing through him, Ida would yell. Mirio would then send a few more punches into Bakugo, who would then drop to the ground, unable to even stand. He almost packs as much of a wall up as Deku, Bakugo would yell. Mirio would then fall through the ground, appear behind Deku, getting everyone in one A with one punch to their stomach before they can even react, and eventually it's just him and Deku, and Deku would turn to face him. Aizawa would then say, well I know you may be hurt both physically and emotionally, the one who just fought is the closest to being number two, that includes the pros. The number one is that burly kid, right? He's scary, said Amajiki. I heard that Deku would say scary Amajiki as Deku then gets in a fighting stance and Miro does the same and he bursts with yellow lightning. One for all, tremor tremor. With these words they disappear and clash 20 feet in the sky causing a massive shockwave to erupt as sparks of lightning then go everywhere and Miro is about to be blown into a wall but he manages to permeate through it and he catapults back out from the ground just as Deku then starts to fall and with a hockey infused punch he and Miro then clash once again. Super strength huh? Nice Deku would say. Thank you, Mirror would say as he slams back into the ground and he permeates through it again and he gets catapulted back out as he lands breathing heavily. Amajiki and Nejiro are left shocked. If Mirror couldn't permeate, he definitely would have broken a bone or two, said Amajiki. And Nejiro would then say, and he's not even using his quakes yet. He's just like you, Sensei. In what way? I can't break a building with a punch? He can do that, Nejiro would yell. Why do you sound so surprised? He can cause earthquakes, Amajiki would yell. And Mirror, meanwhile, asks Deku ask if he's ready to work you know, go back at it again, actually says that he gives up. Sorry, but having to come back out like that every time is a bit weird for me. Aw. Well, it was still a great time. Yeah, for you. As they could look down, he saw his groaning classmates and apologized. You traitor, Kaminari would say. You could have stepped in. Deku, however, only laughs nervously, but Aizawa then saying that wraps it up, and after they all managed to get up somehow, even though that hurt like hell, they all stand before Mirio and the other two from the big three. So, how strong was my first quirk? Too strong, what the hell? I swear, you have three quirks or something, how did you teleport like that? He's not teleporting, Deku would say, he's pushing himself back out by deactivating his quirk. Thank you, I wanted to say it. As Nejiri pouts, Deku would then apologize, and Mirror would then say that Deku is right. When I descend and deactivate my power, it's as if the masks can't overlap on top of each other down there, so I get shot back out. I just learned to position myself before I do. Then your quirk really is powerful, said Asui. Nope, I made it strong. Let me give you an example. When I submerge myself, I literally feel nothing. I can't hear, I don't have a sense of touch, everything passes through me but I still have mass so all I feel is a sensation of falling. That sounds terrifying, Minato would say. Amira then says that's why you need to learn to adapt insanely. 
This is the type of experience you'll get, the type that'll turn you into a completely different type of hero. I'm hoping when the chance comes, you'll reach for it. Enamored by his speech and his work ethic, they all cannot help but clap as he even sounds like a pro when he talks and Deku then realizes something. Shit, when I cancel Quirks, they fade for a bit, that's probably why you didn't want Conqueror's Hockey on top of it. Hence why I asked you to stop, if it wasn't for a limit break, I would have been pulverized. Then how much have you gotten used to that quirk? You only got it recently, right Todoroki would ask. And Miro says, luckily I've been training my body for a while, so even when I got it, it's, it's, I'm all good. Alright, uh, we have to go. Good luck though. Let's meet again sometime, Deku would say, and Miro says, yeah, hopefully. We then fade to black as when class ends, Deku and Bakugo find themselves in the lounge with Miro and All Might. Well, that was quick, Deku would say. What was? Oh, it's nothing. Why are we here? We have internships soon, I need to get my revenge on that long neck bastard, can we hurry this up, Bakugo would say. Are you talking about Sir Genus? Who else? Well, you certainly don't miss your words, <laughs> Mira would say, and Omai then cuts in saying to settle down, and he says he is choosing to share something with these two, because they must already know something about him and Mirio. Oh, question, did you give Mirio your quirk, Deku would ask? Instantly, the three become shocked, and Bakugo is only shocked at the concept of what he said, but not like, super shocked. But Mirio would then ask how he could tell. My observation actually lets me see the aura of people and the power behind their wills. There are literally eight people infused with you. Eight wills, eight auras, eight quirks. Oma and Mirio are dumbfounded as with a nervous sweat, Oma says that he expected no less from him. Yes, I will explain what my quirk is. It has to do with the man that you met that day. At the mention of these words, Deku's playful facade becomes non-existent as he becomes deadly and he says to continue. This is all way too connected, Bakugo thought. About 30 minutes pass of questioning and answering from both sides, with All Might giving the secret of his uh, secret torch, one for all, that belonged to, belonged to Mirio, to Bakugo, and Deku. Then, this isn't good, Bakugo would say. Everyone looks at him asking why, and he would say that if there were so many powerful quirk users that hung up to the quirk and they gave it off, then that means that something must be wrong with the quirk. I mean, think about it. No one mentions these heroes who had these amazing, this amazing power. It's like they barely existed. Also. If that all for one guy was so disfigured, then it shows that something is very dangerous about the power. I mean, he needed something to help him breathe. Is this true, All Might? asked Muriel. All Might would then say, possibly. I'll look into it, but forget about that for now. Uh, Meridoria, who do you plan to work with? Azawa Sensei, duh. Uh, I wanted you to meet Sir, Muriel would say. And Deku says, however, I'm good. I don't do well with crazy fans. How'd you know? All Might would say as he jumps out of his seat, and Deku says he could simply tell. Time skip three days later, and it is Saturday. Deku runs out of the living room from his personal room while wearing his costume, saying, "Later, guys." He says to everyone, "This." Uh, he says this to everyone while they're, uh, you know, eating breakfast. And Bakugo would say, "Why the hell are you leaving so early?" Deku then says that he knows how Azawa gets and leaves with a big smile on his face. For someone who likes to sleep in a lot, he's way too excited to be going at 6 a.m. Toroki would say, "Figures." Azawa senses his favorite here. Bakugo would say. We then cut to Deku and Aizawa patrolling the streets once again, but this time they're afoot and uh, Aizawa fills Deku in on what they're doing uh, specifically here. Beforehand, he also showed Deku a picture of their main suspect, Chisaki, and Aizawa says there's also a sort of drug circulating around, likely from the Saikai gang, more specifically from the young leader, Chisaki. He should wear something more normal if he doesn't want to be recognized easily. It's like he's taunting us or something. Well, whatever he's doing, we're going to be investigating and that means you finally need a code name. Seriously. Deku then scratches his head nervously as we have a flashback to Deku when they were choosing hero names. What do you got for me, kid? asked Midnight. Deku then goes up to the podium, lays down his board, and turns it and his entire class sees that he has written down, I don't know. We then go back to the present and Deku says, well, for now, how about Deku? Any particular meaning? I always asked. And Deku says, it's what Bakugo used to call me when he wanted to piss me off. When he did, I called him Kachan and he got pissed. So we both stopped and yeah, still has a good ring to it though. That's enough for me. Let's move in, as I would say. As they patrol, Azawa tells Deku to use uh, his observation to keep an eye on suspicious characters. By detecting their will, Deku, uh, Deku can easily do so, and along the way, they stop some weak-level villains, but they don't really encounter anything particular or particularly sp uh, suspicious. But they start to give up on this part of town they're in, honestly, because they're not getting any leads, and Deku would say, maybe we should... At that moment, something clicks with Deku as he runs forward faster than ever and he appears before a family just walking alongside the road, shocking them and everyone on the street when bullets then fly out hitting Deku who covers himself with armament hockey. But as they hit, they propel themselves with some sort of strange mechanism, piercing the armament armor and stunting Deku as he begin to fall. Those things got past Midoriya? Not the time, Aizawa thought. He then spotted the sniper and told everyone to evacuate the area while he started to chase after the perpetrator. 
Midoriya, hold on. Deku then says he's okay, and as Zelda reaches the rooftops, when he then sees the villain flying away and using his quirk, he would then release uh, his scarf after jumping, and this allows him to quickly apprehend the villain that has lost the use of his quirk. But as soon as he reels him in and catches him, the villain would spew blood, shocking the hero, and as the villain falls, Azawa would then see that his eyes are now lifeless, and he is bleeding from his mouth like a whole lot, and he will be missing a tooth. Suicide. This was planned. Back down, Deku would begin to stand with his body steaming and bulging with veins, and somehow, by using his Conqueror's spirit, he expels whatever, uh, whatever toxin was inside him, and as he stands straight, he notices that he is glowing with a different sort of aura. Well, that was a fun discovery. He then looks up and sees Azawa who walks back to the edge of the building and he would put a thumbs up to him. Yeah, I think we got a lead, Azawa would say. At this very moment, we then find Chisaki walking down the halls of his subterranean basement and as his underling Chrono be holding Eerie, along the way they meet a worried henchman who becomes nervous when he sees Chisaki walk up. I, I promise, I took my eye off her for a second and with one slap of his hand, he rips up the man to nothing as his blood would then splatter to the walls, causing Eerie to start crying. Clean that up. Yes sir, Chrono would say. Shisaki would then say, oh, these idiots infected with this hero syndrome, getting in my way. He would then reach the testing room and its doors would slide open with Chrono then letting down Iri, who reluctantly would grab Shisaki's hand as he reaches it out. Now don't run away anymore, okay? You're the key to this whole plan. As she looks at this all too familiar room, her eyes lose life as Chrono slowly unwraps her bandages and she prepares to go in. At this moment, Mimic would then arrive with the phone in hand as he would then ask for Shisaki's attention. It's Tomer Shigaraki from the League. He said he's ready to give you an answer to your proposition. Out on the streets, however, we find a devastated Mirio as he stares on the alleyway that Eri had run down after he failed to save her, and that's the only thought that ran through his mind. I can't save her. I can't save her at all. I can't do anything. We then have another quick time skip. About two days pass, and other heroes have certain encounters with the byproducts of Chisaki's creations, whether that be quirk instantly drugs or quirk boosting drugs, but Kirishima in particular of course had a very close encounter with the man's boosted quirk. He of course overcame it with Unbreakable, while Sun Eater was unable to use his quirk for a while. It soon came back, but after all this, uh, Nida would personally begin an investigation and soon he gathers everyone involved in the investigation to talk. Heroes such as Ryoku, Fat Gum, Rock Lock, and so many others come with their interns such as Asui, Kirishima, Amajiki, Mirio, Deku, Uraka, and of course, Nejire. Bubba Girl will then stand in front of everyone and start the meeting. So, we here at the Nida Agency have found a certain villain group called the Hisaikai. They're more of a gangster group, but still. Kisagiri Man, who was a certain hero, would then say, if I may ask, what started this whole investigation? Oh, some band of thieves had a huge incident that happened, but the police officers wrote it off as just an accident. And there was some inconsistency with that report, and this is where we are. The centipede, sci uh, the psychic centipede, my bad. Uh, the psychic centipede then stands saying, after spying on the thieves, we have found some communications between them and a bunch of other underground criminal organizations, and one of them was the Asaikai. Their main goal seems to be expansion and accumulation of funds. We also found out yesterday that they made contact with Twice from the Villain League. The Villain League, so that's why you asked for me and Tsukauchi, said Grand Torino. Locklock like would then say, hey, um, can I say something? Why are these kids here? They're just going to be slowing us down. Fakum, however, would stand up his seat saying that that's nonsense, and he points to Kirishima and Amajiki, saying that they're important witnesses to this whole thing. Indeed, I call for people who were involved with Chisaki's drug distribution schemes, Nidai would say. Back in my day, Fakum would say, I fought a lot of distributors, but this time, one of them has something different. A drug that destroys quirks. Sunny here was hit by it. Mirio would then stand asking if Amajiki was okay, and he partially transformed to show that he was fine, and Fakum told Eraserhead uh, to add to what he just said, and always says that well, it can't kill Quirks, it seems different than his own erasure, because it, well he cancels out, uh, how he, well he cancels out Quirks, what the fuck am I doing, for a while, he doesn't change it like the drug does, and Fagum says that after going to the hospital, they were told that part of Amajiki's Quirk factor had been damaged, luckily his natural healing factor is taking care of that, but we couldn't get much insight into what it was until we got something, because the bullets bounced off Kirishima here. As the room looks to him, you'd be surprised that he helped so much. And Deku puts up another saying, Nice. That's really cool, Kirishima, Rako would say. Way to go, Asui would say. Oh, thanks guys, Kirishima would say. However, the mood is then dampened when everyone is told the bullets were found to have contained human cells, causing Miro to freeze up, and Deku senses his anger and guilt. Everyone is disgusted. Shisaki apparently had a daughter. She was reported to have been covered in bandages. Hearing this, Deku's hockey would rise as he begins to slowly release a blood-red aura. That bastard uses his own daughter to make bullets, didn't he? 
Isaiah then looks at Deku canceling his quirk, but even with that, his bloodlust would fill the entire room, and Grandor would say, yeah, I still can get used to that. It's too horrible to imagine, Ryuki would say, and Ruraka would ask, how could someone do that to their own daughter? There's a chance she might not actually be related to him, which might explain how he can do such a thing so easily. And Midori and I would say, use that anger for when we actually go after them. Your conqueror spirit and quirk dancing abilities will be a great deal of help. Don't worry, I got it. After the meeting ends, the students then go back to working and going to school and balancing it out until Nadai finds the location of Eerie and that Saikai gang and at 8pm sharp, they all gather suited up to, well, beat the fuck out of the, the gang, you know? And they all gathered by the police station first and got filled in on everything and they were given a map to the Saikai mansion and slowly the lead police officer walks up to the gate and rings the bell only for a gigantic villain to then rip the gates off swinging wildly waiting for the police officers up front. In that instant, however, his arm is then stopped as he screams in pain with Deku tightening his grip around it. Shut the hell up! As he screams, he releases the conqueror spirit, causing the villain's eyes to go blink as he becomes immobile. Seeing this close up is pretty awesome, honestly. Glad I'm on this side, thought Rocklock. The shocked heroes then see Deku easily punch back the villain into the house, and as he falls, he charges with Deku, uh, of course, you know, running ahead. And while they do, uh, Ryuku, Asui, and uh, Uraka stay behind to make sure the villain doesn't wake up and go berserk, and the others continue ahead. And they notice that those who were supposed to combat them and stop them were out cold and foaming at the mouth, and some officers stay to cuff them. Damn, this kid's power is too strong. I wonder if it reached the people inside the house, the heroes be wondering. The rest then run in and come across a secret passage to the dungeon, but it was already open as the gangsters lay on the stairs, foaming at the mouth, and Deku would say, what are you waiting for, come on, and as he runs down the stairs, Nadai would then say to stop moving as he pleases. Is it just me or did his range widen much more since the entrance exams, Ashley would say, and Kirishima says, probably, this is better for us though. Bubble Girl then stays outside with some officers to handle those uh, gangsters that were on the stairs, and everyone goes down below. Down the hallway though, they see a wall blocking them just as Deku would then reach out and make a fist, causing a crack as the wall would then explode to bits. He can do that without punching now, Faka Murillo, and he's legitimately impressed, as is everyone except Aizawa and his classmates, as Deku's classmates, who have already seen it many times before at this point. I learned that days before the festival, wait, wait Deku would say. He then stops and everyone does as well, with them then seeing the warping ground before, uh, before them, and when they look ahead, the hall in front of them will be twisting and turning. It must be one of Chisaki's men, cause this ain't his work, says the police officer. And Fakem would then say he probably took a little boost. This whole place is probably a twisting labyrinth. This might before he can even finish his words, Deku would then slam his fist to the ground, releasing a word with Alphaman Haki that would reset the hallway back to normal as it reaches further and further. Get down here, Deku would yell, as he releases his conqueror spirit and from the ceiling then begins to fall mimic, and Miro then appears behind him by jumping into the walls and catapulting himself out before he then sends a punch into his stomach, and as he lands, Miro then runs ahead as Deku then follows and the heroes will do the same. At this point, we're not gonna really do anything, are we? Rocklock would think. Along the way, the heroes split up to take care of their prospective villains, uh, respective villains, my bad, and this time the villains from the league aren't coming because ironically, Chisaki believes in Izuku, he believes that he will easily destroy Chisaki and after that he will wait to pick up the broken pieces. As they run down the halls, Deku would then grab onto Miro saying, I'm gonna throw you. Miro would then nod and as they near a corner, Deku would then fling Lemillion down the hall to his left and in a surprise Chisaki then find himself kicked across the face and sent flying into an open area. They came earlier than expected, Kurno would say, as he points his gun at Miro, who then disarms him quickly before then slamming a punch into his stomach. This time I'm not letting you go, okay, Miro would say, as he would then catch Eerie, just as Deku would then arrive and jump into the air, kicking upward and slamming a punch into the stomach of a waiting villain who was about to ambush them. Take a little nap. He and the villain then descend, but Deku gracefully lands and the villain just slams to the ground and goes splat, and he walks past Miro saying to leave this to him. This bastard's mine. S stay away, he's planning to kill you. Shut up, Eerie. The words of the villain then shake up the little girl as he would then stab a syringe into his neck. Because of your selfishness, I'm always forced to do- Oh, I don't want to dirty my hands because of your little attitude. Deku would then feel something change in Chisaki, as his shoes would then be blown off, allowing him to touch the ground, and instantly he releases spikes all around the room, and Eerie would cry to stop. How dare you. As the spikes hit Deku, they shatter instantly, as his body gets covered with a red aura, before Chisaki would then stab another syringe into his body, before he then swipes forward, releasing five gigantic slashes from his uh, longing fingernails, and they manage to cut through Deku's armament hockey. Deku, however, would then close the distance and appear right in front of Chisaki as he strikes him in the stomach with no hockey at all. Uh, he doesn't punch with hockey at all, like, yeah. And instantly, he feels weakened just by touching Chisaki, who would then call him an idiot as he reconstructs his hand, making it more dense and big, 
much like Kendo does with her quirk, and even then Sama punches into Deku's face. No, let me go back, he's gonna kill him. Mira however would then hold her back saying to trust Midoriya, as long as he's standing, he'll be fine. As Shisaki keeps hitting Deku and keeps get, like hitting him over and over and over, he soon stops and turns his arm back to normal before then crossing his arms, releasing 10 slashes. You should not rely on strength so much, kid. As he hits Deku, however, his fingernails shatter as Deku explodes with Conqueror Spirit, which then gathers into his fist while he forms a Tremor Spear. Yeah, you're right, but that's just how I do. Take cover! Mario would then turn and crouch, holding Eerie as close as possible, and Deku punches the air, causing a crack to form right before Chisaki, who will be blown into a wall, breaking it as the entire part of the building just begins to crumble. As this happens, Deku would then leap into the air and release one of his jaws, catching the fall of Chisaki and reeling him over as he would then hold him. Don't get ahead of yourself, I was just testing things out. Mario would then slowly get up, and as he does, a piece of rubble would then fall before him and he backs away. Are you- Oh, Midoriya. He then sees Deku land amongst the rubble, and he holds Shisaki, who will be leaking a certain toxin from his body, which is what he had injected into himself, combined with the poison that he used, uh, he had one of his men use on Deku. Clearly it was effective, so he used it again, in case you were confused. Iri watches as, in shock, the man she feared becomes as weak as she was before him in the face of a simple student. It's kind of weird. Mira would then tighten his hold, saying, What'd I tell you? Deku would then walk over, be walking over when he is holding the gang leader like a ragdoll, but as he is, he slightly f slips on a part of the rubble, causing his serious demeanor to fade as he would then smile, putting a thumbs up. It's nice to meet you, Eri. How about we get you to a hospital? Uh, are you okay? He overestimated his drug and underestimated my hockey. Or maybe he thought his will was just stronger than yours, Mira would say. Considering how driven he was, maybe. At this moment, Eri would then hold her horn in pain as it begins to spurt, but instantly Deku would tap her on the head and use armament hockey to stop her berserk state. His hands, they're so warm. They're both so nice. Finally bringing out everything she was holding back, Eri would cry as the two boys would frankly try to help her stop, but to no avail, she keeps crying until she goes to sleep in Miro's arms. And as they're walking the hallways, Miro would say, Sorry about all this. I should have saved her the first time. You're overthinking it. She's safe now because you held her tight and didn't let go. I just landed the final attack. Thanks, Miro would say. Meanwhile, at a certain mountain range, you find uh, Gran Torino and what he has been up to since he's not present at the Hisaikai uh, hideout. He's been beating some villains, he and Tsukaochi and some of his, uh, his uh, his, uh, what the fuck, Tsukaochi and some of his men with Gran Torino chase down and corner Kurogiri. He can use his quirk even without using his hands, close in carefully, uh, Tsukaochi would yell. However, as he lays on the ground beaten, Kurogiri would laugh. You're not aware, Gran Torino? There have been sightings of that ruffian here. As the police officers wonder what he's talking about, the ground would begin to shake, and Kurogi would say, Our master has already foreseen this future. This is still a part of the plan. As he says this, a gigantic shadow looms over them, and they all stare up to see a giant. His name is Giganto Makia. Master has not only been cultivating Tomura Shigaraki. Are you kidding me? Gran Torino thought. About five hours later, the sun would begin to set, and we find Miro lying by Eri while she sleeps because she actually held on, to, uh, held on to him and would let go, and then she fell asleep. Miro's smile was back, and he was glad that this was finally over, but out in the hallway on the news, it was reported that Chisaki had been stopped by the League of Villains and disabled, and he now had no hands, and a hero named Snatch was killed. The police is facing serious criticism currently. It's also confirmed that a special piece of evidence was lost. Things are not looking good for our enforcers. Midoriya, as I would say, as he walks over and Deku stares at the TV with a sour look and he has his arms crossed. Lately, it's like nothing ever works out. Don't think about it too much. Someone's here to see you. Deku then uncrosses his arms and looks forward to see Inko and he quickly runs over and hugs her picking up to the sky. Oh, let me down. I'm gonna hit the ceiling light. Deku then lets her down apologizing. Don't worry, I'm fine. Yeah, your smile's back. You scared me there for a bit. Sensei, can I go with Inko however would say no. There's someone else who needs your help much more than me. Then why are you here? What, I can't see my own son? She would exclaim as she becomes far more terrifying and Deku would shake his head in fear. Just what is their plan? Those villains, I saw thought. A few more days later in class, one day would be gathered talking about their hobbies, just talking like usual, and Mina would begin to break dance much to the surprise of everyone and she was amazing at it. So dancing is your hobby, huh? Aoyama would say. I can't really think of anything. Oh, I just remembered I got these tickets for a movie. You could say that's my hobby. You guys wanna come? Well, we can't all come. Yes, you can, Deku would say. I got tickets for all of us, any NASA. But that would imply your mom actually gave you money for that. How the hell did you get those things, Bakugo would say. I got a job. Duh. Construction work? That fits you perfectly, they all thought. What are we watching then, Kaminari would ask. And Deku says, it's a new movie that came out called Lights Out. 
Bakugo hearing this then looks to Deku who then put a thumbs up saying, I got you. A tear almost falls out of his eye as Bakugo then smiles saying, Thank you. Oh, so you can cry as he would say. Of course I can, shut up. And he's back to normal. As Bakugo grunts in annoyance, everyone laughs but are hyped to see the movie because it sounds like a lot of fun. And later Aizawa comes in his sleeping bag with a tired expression as he would say, It's time for the culture festival. Instantly the class would erupt with excitement and as they are, Ashi would then ask Aizawa if it's still okay to go see Iri today and if he had time to. Yeah, I'll do it later, but now let's get into Kishima, however, would say, Is this really the time for us to be doing this? Villains have been going at us left and right. We shouldn't have a huge festival like that, right? Oh, uh, you became super responsible, man, Deku would say. I mean, it's true though, Kishima would say. Aizawa then says, I understand your worries, but as the villains came and the sport festivals occurred, all of that has been revolving around us. Some students have been feeling quite down. The culture festival isn't just about the heroics, and that's why it has to go on. Oh yeah, Mei's gonna be in it. She's obsessed with just showing off her stuff, Deku would say. I honestly feel kind of bad now, Kishima would say. And as I would say, no, your concerns are fine. If, if anything, had a certain someone not been here, I would have been more cautious. You mean me, right? You're welcome, Deku would say. Maybe boasting about it isn't the best choice, but yes, he means you, Todoroki would say. I mean, we want to approach a school with a student who can crack reality. Alright, let's get into it, as I would say. I'm going to sleep. Start thinking up ideas. As he falls asleep, Deku, Ida, and Momo go up and get ideas. Kamurai suggests a maid cafe, Sato suggests a crepe stand, uh, Hagakure suggests a haunted house, and Deku would say, that's very in character for you. And it fits because we're going to that movie. Oh, a dancing show, Mina would say. A skit or something, says Jiro. But don't you play instruments, Deku would ask. Jiro with a look of embarrassment and says, yes, but I'm not, no, you're really good, Kamurai would say. I've heard you play before, I was passing by and I heard you on the guitar. As an embarrassed Jiro tries to hide though, Toroki would then say, hmm. Why don't we combine everything, dancing, playing instruments, and make a song together? You mean like a concert, Minari would say? Toroki then nods, and everyone is liking the idea, and because this is something that is spectacular, but it's also something that can include everyone. Everyone can have a part in it. Raku would then say, Jiro, you have to play, please. You look so happy when you're talking about instruments and music and stuff. The others say the same, and even Koda says that her voice and her guitar could be what might brighten up the spirits of the other kids, and Momo would say that if she doesn't want to, she doesn't have to, but Jiro would say, fine, I'll do it. Really? Awesome, Karnar would say. Yeah, after all, after being told all of that, if I still refuse, it wouldn't be very rock and roll, would it? Hearing all of this coming from Jiro, who is usually shy, they get all hyped and start thinking of like, how to do things and go to get, why am I talking about, why am I talking like this? They start talking about things and start talking about ideas and just start planning everything out, but this is where I will end the fifth part. Welcome to the end of the video, like usual, I hope that was banger for you, it was banger for me, at least it was a banger for my head because I kept hitting myself or trying to fucking re-record horrible parts. Oh my god, I really stuttered so much in this shit. Of course, you're not going to notice it. I'm going to edit all that shit out. I'm not trying to look embarrassing over here. Point is, I hope you did enjoy it. Um, it wasn't as fun as the usual times because it's fucking boring over here. But, hey, it's going to be fun watching your reactions, uh, reading your reactions. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this. I'm really going up. I'm going up into the fucking, like, fifth season. Yeah, we're going there. I told you. We're doing this. Past the Eerie arc? Well, there's still a story to finish, and I'm going to finish it. Alright, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to all of that, blah, 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 blah. Stay safe. Stay in school. I'm going to be getting out of school because I'm graduating soon. But you get the point. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. Oh, darling, if I had bought you flowers, would you still be here by my side? Yeah, I thought this moment could be ours While I'm walking lonely through the night You can break my bones Break all the promises But me Can stay with him. Just fucking stay with him.